Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. We are so grateful to our Father who has given us this opportunity to fellowship, to get to know him more and more, to get to discover more about ourselves, about God, about what he did, so that we may walk in the fullness of our freedom that he owed, he bought for us. And he doesn't want you to walk in fear, in darkness, in ignorance, you know, because that will not help you to experience the fullness of man, a life that God intended for man. So I pray today in Jesus' mighty name that yes, indeed, you will not miss the point. You will just know, you will just grasp, you will easily understand by the spirit of wisdom and understanding all that God has given you, all that has been given to you, all that you have in Christ Jesus, I pray that that is exactly what you will see and that is what you will get. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, I pray. Thank God, thank God for this wonderful day. Thank God for this beautiful day. Thank God for this unique moment that we have with our Father. We have a powerful message. We have a powerful story. We have a powerful an old time message that showed us how death was destroyed and that man was set free from that bondage, from the existence of that bondage. And he was transferred into another existence. And that is so amazing. I like it. Uh, it's so amazing, brothers and sisters. It's so amazing that we are into another existence. That's what we read in the way version. The way version told us and so in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 and so might transfer into a new existence those who through the hunting dead of death were all their lifetime about death beneath a yoke of veritable slavery imagine to be um, bowed he said bowing down bowing beneath beneath under under a yoke of veritable slavery this was a serious slavery so in other words it was saying that uh, many of the bondages, you know, some of you who knows the story of the Jews, you know, many times they were taken into bondage uh, from time to time, you know. And uh, so that is an example, not a good idea, a good example. When they were in bondage, were they happy? When, for instance, they were in Egypt, what was going on? What was going on? People were beaten. People were, were, were suffering. People were crying. People were treated very harshly, very bad. I mean, it was a situation that nobody wished to have or see or experience. But that is exactly what happened. But you see, this is the bondage where they, wanted to, they didn't want to be. And when God set them free, when God set them free, when God set them free, when they saw themselves out, they were singing, jubilating, praising Him, giving praises and worshiping the Lord. Because, you see, there's nothing good in bondage. You see, you can be in bondage and not know. Today, you know, this kind of bondage is a, a soul bondage, a mental bondage, ignorance, you know, not knowing. So, Because, you know, let me tell you something, if you can get it. One, one of the things that people are aware of, people are aware of the life, you know, the, the life they have come to know. It is the life from the fallen man. I want you to, to notice that people don't even know the life that Adam had before he fell. So what we, we, we are used to, what was introduced to us ever since we were born, it was not the life before the fall. It was the life after the fall. So what then came in our minds, the minds will always try to cope up with what is presented to it or to, 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 to people. So what you present to people is what they get used to. 
If you're born and you found that's exactly what it is and some people try to be better, others try to be better, but still there's a certain level where you cannot go, you, you cannot exceed. For instance, I'm talking about, for instance, I'll give you an example, that, uh, the, this example. When Adam fell, you know, he came low, so low. He, he, came, so, he came down that um, the children he gave birth to, they were born not in, in Eden because it was, already, it was already cast out of Eden. So the children were, out, were born out of Eden, I mean in, in the curse, in that curse. So they thought this is exactly, or this is the kind of life that it was supposed to be experienced. So life was so harsh, things were so hard, according to the curse that was pronounced upon Adam and his descendants. So the whole stock of Adam knew one experience, what they got from their forefather, and that is Adam. So did you know that up to date, that the kind of life people are used to is the fallen life? Now I think you, you get it. The fallen life means the life after the fall. That is what we know as an experience. So when Jesus came, who did not participate in the fall, rather who wanted to set free those who are in the fall, who, had, who were f found in, their, in the fall, he began to live a life that was a shock to many. That kind of life which was a shock to many is not supposed to be a shock to us. Because he was demonstrating this is the natural, normal life. This is the ordinary life. You might think that this is not natural, this is not ordinary, but this is the ordinary life. See? So we were shocked to see the kind of life, walking upon waters, speaking words and things were happening, you know, healing everybody, living a life that was so strange to the ordinary man. But that life is exactly what we were supposed to live. But since people were living below the kind of life that were existing, they were supposed to live in, they thought, wow, wow, wow. Let me give you another example of that probably will uh, even enhance this. The children who are born in, uh, in, the slaver, in slavery in, in, in Egypt were born when the Jews were in slavery. When they grew up in that kind of slavery, they thought probably this is the life. Probably this is what, you know, they get used to it because they were born into that condition. They were born in that situation. But as they grew up, they probably found out, oh, but is it exactly the kind of life we're supposed to live? For instance, the Bible said that when, uh, by faith, Eb Moses, when he grew up, he refused to be called the son of the daughter of, of, uh, of Pharaoh. He chose to identify himself with his brethren that were suffering. You see, he had discovered, oh, I was, this, this is not where they are supposed to be. This is not exactly what people are supposed to be. But some people were okay. Were, had given up and they were into slavery and you know that was the case but I want you to tell to know that just because people were born after the fall does not mean that is the standard of life God had set but since it is the only one that is known over the world people experience that so much and when I'm talking about this life most times people th think of the externalities that's why we go wrong. That's why we go wrong. See, the destruction of Adam began from the inside. The whole life is supposed to be perceived on the inside differently. It's not about what you see on the outside. It's so much of what you see on the inside. Because when you have peace, it doesn't mean that this, it's the absence of, of war. No, it is that, that rest on the inside. And once you are resting inside, you just know. See, peace is real. You can have that peace on the inside. We'll talk about it. But I'm saying, can you realize, can you see that, you know, we are called to live a life that is beyond the fall. Uh-huh. Now, that is exactly what he's saying. And so might transfer into a new existence those who, through the hunting dread, dread of death. Do you realize that he's saying, that we are transferred into another existence. So I wanted to elaborate more on that. You may grasp why there, is a, there, is a, there are two kinds of existence. The first existence is the one from the fall. The second existence is what was produced after the fall was overthrown. 
and that was established by Jesus Christ. That new existence is what we see in Christ Jesus. And the first is, is over, now the second just begins. So we have to understand how these things took place, what happened, how it works, and how it, it, it came about. You know, so this is the most important thing that I, I want you to, to understand. So we have a different kind of existence. We have another existence. Another existence presented to us. Another existence presented to us. So if you have this existence presented to you, what do you do? You then learn to live the new kind of life that is being presented to you. You begin to see that fear is not ordinary. So I wanted to present this, you know, in line with fear. To tell you that fear is not okay. Fear is not ordinary. Fear is not something to be tolerated. Because it won't help you. Look, once you hear, once you fear, you have to understand that it's only keeping you into bondage. And if you are scared today or fear, it's because you lack the understanding of what the cross did. So if you see the only victory or deliverance from fear is you and I discovering what happened on the cross because it tells us that he put, he destroyed the one who had power of death and therefore he delivered those who were under the bondage of fear in their, all, in their lifetime. So all their lives, they were under subject of what? Of that kind of bondage. That is exactly what he wants us to know. We should be set free from this fear. We should be set free from this fear. Brothers and sisters, we should be set free from this fear. Fear is something that God doesn't want to see in your life. And again, like I said, can you imagine your life without fear? Can you imagine your life without fear? There's a version called Knox. He said, he says, he would deliver those multitudes who lived all the while as slaves made over to, to the fear of death. You see, the kind of life he doesn't want for you it is the life called the life of a slave. You see, for instance, we are sons. When we are sons, we receive the spirit of sons that makes us cry that Abba, Father. When we receive this spirit, the Bible tells us that we do not receive the spirit that brings us into bondage because that's what people used to be. Rather, we receive the spirit, the, the spirit of power, wisdom, the, the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. So you see, we should understand that the spirit that we have today that replaced that old spirit is the spirit of God, the spirit of sons that set them free from this slavery. I want you to understand that fear is slavery. If you tolerate fear, then you are actually allowing yourself to live and, uh, and be controlled by in, in, in that slavery. That slavery, God has destroyed it by destroying the one who had power of death and so that we may be free, so that we may be free. Slavery is the issue. For instance, you read WNT, it says, had been subject to lifelong slavery. So the word slavery keeps on coming in different uh, versions. The, the version called Word, it says, had all their lives been living in slavery and might free men from their perpetual bondage. That is the version Stevens. So what you see is this bondage, you know, slavery, slavery. This is exactly what God wanted us to be free from. Brothers and sisters, I pray that you will be free, that you experience another existence that is free from free fear in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you.